The iPhone 15 just leaked, and the design is going to be very different. It is not what you expect it to be. It's pretty shocking, and not in a good way. So let's break down all of the biggest leaks and rumors about the iPhone 15 line that you need to know. Let me tell you the good news, let me tell you the bad news, let me tell you the latest leaks, and also why a dumb iPhone might come with the iPhone 15, and how it just could totally save Apple. Seriously, this might be a really big deal. As a self-admitted Apple fanboy who usually loves all things Apple, I've got to admit that I've never been more conflicted about an iPhone lineup than I am right now about the iPhone 14. On one hand, the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max are pretty good phones. I like the dynamic island, the camera is a nice upgrade, I personally really love the always on display, and Apple has done more to make their Pro phones more Pro this year, and I for one am loving my 14 Pro Max that I use every single day. And it's not just me, according to sales figures and analyst reports, the 14 Pro and Pro Max are so popular that you might be hard pressed to find one right now, especially if you're looking to get one before the holidays and before even the end of the year, might be a little bit tricky because these phones are so hot and in such high demand. But on the other hand, the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus just really aren't great buys. Usually the non-pro iPhones are good in their own right, they pack some great features, but the differences here between the 13 are so minimal that for 99% of people, I think you're better off skipping an iPhone 14 phone and going with a 13 equivalent if you can, or just spend the $200 and go to the pro phone equivalent. Not something I usually recommend, but this year, these phones are just not selling well. In fact, according to multiple reports, Apple just can't sell them. They keep cutting and cutting production on these phones because no one seems to want them. And I kind of understand why. And that sort of leads to a lot of interesting questions for the iPhone 15 line coming next year. What's Apple gonna do to fix this mess? Are they gonna slash prices? Are they gonna get rid of some iPhone models? Well, according to rumors, the first thing that Apple is going to do is bring a lot of big changes to every single iPhone 15 model in order to sort of spur some enthusiasm with the iPhone 15 line. The 14 line is good, but again, that 14 and 14 plus don't have a whole lot of momentum going for it, which should not be the case for every single iPhone 15 model next year because a lot of big changes are coming. The first big change that a lot of you are going to be excited about and that has now been confirmed from multiple sources is that Apple is going to switch to USB-C on every single iPhone 15 model next year. But not just that, but also faster data transfer speeds too, at least on the Pro models. While every phone is going to get a USB-C port, the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max are going to get faster sort of Thunderbolt uh, equivalent, Thunderbolt-esque speeds for data transfer on on and off your iPhone. And this right here is gonna be a very common theme we're gonna see more than ever on the entire iPhone 15 line. It's Apple giving more features or better features to the pro end more expensive iPhones, while the regular phones will be good, but not nearly as good as the pros, as Apple tries to push more people up to the pro end phones. And before I get to all the cool features of the iPhone 15 Pro and the all new iPhone 15 Ultra, I want to talk for a second about something on the other uh, side, the other end of the iPhone lineup, and that is towards the bottom with a dumb iPhone. It was recently leaked that Apple is working on a custom accessibility mode inside of iOS 16, and through these leaked screenshots, some interesting discussions started to pop up. What you see here is like a very basic, very stripped down version of iOS. You've got big icons that are easy to tap into and to load in apps. You've got your basic functionality here. You've got texting, you've got music streaming, you've got camera and a very nice, simple UI. But that's it. There's no florals, is that a word, florals? There's no fluff. There's just the basics for what you need to do on your phone. And this sort of got me thinking, what if Apple was to make a iPhone Lite or a more simple iPhone? That yeah, you could still obviously make calls, you could send texts, you'd have iMessage, you'd have data, you could uh, maybe even still uh, stream music from Apple Music and watch Apple TV stuff, but you didn't have an app store. You didn't have a bunch of the other junk that usually goes onto phones. 
you just had a really simple and streamlined experience that could also mean that that phone would be way, way less expensive. And I'm not entirely sure how popular this model would be, but let me know down below if this is something you'd be interested in. You still had a really great camera. Maybe you had like automatic iCloud photo library for backup and storage and all your stuff was, you know, taken care of for you. We just got a really simple, really good phone system to use, like a still nice iOS, uh, but not all the junk that usually goes along with it. Would you be interested with this uh, concept at all? Let me know your thoughts down below on this. And one of the reasons why I sort of bring this up is that there is sort of that rumor of an iPhone subscription offering or really an Apple hardware subscription offering, maybe launching sometime over the next few months where you could basically pay one flat rate to get access to the latest iPhone and latest Mac and iPads. There is a case to be made for Apple to sort of offer a lower cost alternative, even less than the iPhone SE. Now I don't know if it's something they're ever going to do, at least is worth a discussion down below in the comments. So would you like an iPhone Lite? What do you think you need to have? Let me know your thoughts on this down below and if it'd be a good thing or bad thing for Apple to do. Okay, so moving on from the low end back to the high end, let's talk about the big changes coming to the iPhone 15 line. One change coming to every single iPhone that a lot of you guys should be happy about is the Dynamic Island. According to the leaks and rumors we know right now, looks like Apple is going to expand the Dynamic Island to every single iPhone 15 model next year. The other big question about the iPhone 15 is the design. We've heard from multiple people that the iPhone 15 is gonna get a major re design, but what does a major redesign mean? Because on one hand, I'd consider this to be a major redesign of the iPhone. This is what I'd love to see. But according to Apple, a major redesign, major redesign is something like the Apple Watch Series 6 versus the Series 7. There seems to be no definitive answer right now as to what the design could be, but here are a couple of the rumors uh, and theories floating around right now. One rumor is that we could see an iPhone 4 style redesign, so it'd get boxy edges, scored off corners, round volume buttons, a very nice premium industrial phone that looks very similar to the iPhone 4 from 2010, while another rumor says that Apple is going to round the edges and give us something similar to the iPhone 5 see of course no plastic here on the higher end models and even i guess really all iphone 15 models uh you'd have some different uh materials like aluminum on the 15 and then titanium on the pros uh but a look similar to this not sure if this constitutes a major redesign also sort of funny that apple's going backwards because we did sort of have rounded edges then they switched to the more boxy series on what was that the iphone 12 uh and it looks like now apple's changing things up again not sure if i consider this a major redesign but that's the latest rumor that we've got right now. And then the other really exciting story with the 15 is all about the iPhone 15 Ultra. There are rumors right now that Apple is going to, in a sense, give us an all new model that would replace the iPhone 15 Pro Max and be the new highest end, biggest battery equipped, largest screen pro iPhone that you can get. The iPhone 15 Ultra would have the 6.7 inch OLED display. It'd have the dynamic island. This might be the one to get all of the camera upgrades and goodies, including possibly a 10X optical zoom lens. So if you really do like your optical zoom, this is gonna be the phone to get. And then also maybe Apple adopts some stuff from the uh, Apple Watch Ultra and we get an action button on the side and some other nice things exclusive to that highest end iPhone. Maybe this is the one uh, with the most storage uh, capacity that you can get and some other things that I'm sure is going to be uh, not cheap, probably if not around $1,100, maybe even more uh, as the new top end iPhone to get. That's going to be the new crown jewel while you have the iPhone 15 Pro and then the iPhone 15 line gets a little bit more complicated there too. We know that Apple typically works ahead on things and they usually keep models around for two years before they drop them. Case in point with the iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini. Mini phone wasn't really a hit, but they did keep it around two generations. And by all accounts, the 14 plus isn't a hit. And there is a question of, will we see a 15 plus? I'd say probably Apple's gonna give it one more shot and hopefully they can lower the price to make this more compelling. But I also wouldn't be surprised that starting with the iPhone 16 or even with the iPhone 15, they just sort of ax that fourth option altogether because honestly an iPhone 15, 15 Pro and 15 Ultra makes a lot of sense unless Apple can get pricing under control, unless they can substantially, unfortunately, either raise the price of the Pro phones, uh, or that would be bad, or lower the price of the regular phones, they're sort of stuck in this really weird operation 
corporation, they're stuck in this really weird situation where a $200 difference, it just is enough to separate these phones. And a lot of people are going to either go pro or go with a last generation phone. Whereas if Apple was to slash the price by a couple hundred dollars, that'd make the 15 phones way more compelling and then the pro phones more compelling for their price point. Because as of right now, the 14 just showed it's sort of a really big mess right now. So I'm curious, let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 15 line down below. According to everything we know right now, are you in or are you out? I'm sure we're gonna get things like new colors, we'll probably get some new uh, software features, some camera upgrades. Are you upgrading the iPhone 15? Are you gonna wait? Yes or no? Let me know down below. Also, if you do want some iPhone buying advice, tell me which iPhone you've got right now. You wanna wait for the 15 or you not wanna wait for the 15. If you want some advice, let me know down below. I will answer your comments and we can discuss. And also iPhone 15 Lite, does it make sense? Yes or no? Does a lower cost iPhone subscription offering sound good? Maybe five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, a dollar a month, that's just crazy. But do you think that makes sense? Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the Apple Circle. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.